No, you, you can't just drag people into the shop. No, he says not dragging them in, Granville. It's more propelling them in this direction as if by accident, you see. Ooh. All right, show me. Oh, Granville, you've, you've seen me do it often enough. No, I haven't. I've always been too embarrassed to watch. No, it's, <laughs> it's not a case of embarrassment. It's a test of skill. Well, I hope this section never gets published in my biography. No, I'm warning you, if ever I become famous, well, one day, I want absolutely no reference to this. I see. It's ashamed of it, are you? No, let us just say that I would prefer to gloss over this period of my life with a simple paragraph that reads, For a while, he was employed in a minor executive capacity in a commercial enterprise. <laughs> hey, what happens if they're bigger than me, eh? like him? Well, you're not, not going to wrestle with him, are you? All you're going to do is use a bit of psychology on him. Oh, we're well, going and show me. Oh, Granville, it's, it's simple enough. Look, I'll show you this last once, and then it's your turn, all right? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to try on something a little bit smaller. Oh, don't be <laughs> silly. The bigger they are, the harder they spend. Now, listen, pay attention. Make sure that he is going to pass the shop, because if he's going to come in anyway, you're, you're wasting your time, aren't you? Yeah, no, it's too late. Once they pass the shop, because he'd be round the corner and away, wouldn't he? It's never too late. You catch him at the warehouse door as they go past the back, don't you? <laughs> you go, I'll show you, you go out there, and if he goes round the corner, say, stamp your foot. Stamp me foot? Yeah, you know, you know what stamping your foot is. Like oh. that. <laughs> Missed him. <laughs> Obviously missed him. Oh. <laughs> One thing I hate, it's grit in the eye. Even the tiniest speck feels like a dormer bungalow. You want to wet the corner of your handkerchief? Oh. I can't see anything. Oh, don't well. It must be catching. Don't tell me you're going blind and all. <laughs> Sometimes if you bring your top down and uh, waggle the bottom. Who do you think I am? A gypsy Rosalie? <laughs> oh, hey, it works. It's gone, Granville. Oh, it's gone. Oh, what a relief. Oh, <laughs> oh that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, and now what can we give this a nice young gentleman to show our appreciation? Give? Oh, give over. You don't have to give me anything. You do the same for me. Oh, too proud, you see, to accept charity, Granville. Well, put it this way, what little bargains can we put him on to, to uh, show our appreciation, eh? <laughs> so there we are, sir. <laughs> <laughs> A compliment of the management, sir. Oh, you've been very good. How delightful. Oh, always have a pleasure to see a new face. Oh, I never knew this still existed. What, new faces? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, you find them just underneath new people's hats, you know. <laughs> no, not new faces. Oh. No, these places. Pokey little shops. <laughs> <laughs> Piddledy, all scrunched in. <laughs> Quaint. Oh, good. You really think so? Oh, definitely. Oh, good, because that was just the effect we were, were striving after, you know. <laughs> oh, yes. I remember saying to the architect, now, look, Sir Hugh, I said, we, uh, we don't want any of this in my modern rubbish. We'll go strictly for the quaint. Oh, I love the smell. What is it, do you think? Well, you've uh, come on a bad day, you see. We get a lot of old people in here on a Tuesday. <laughs> 
Which is uh, fine, unless it's been raining and then some of them smell, smell a bit damp, you know. I think it's cough drops, tobacco and paraffin. That's right, and that's only the women. <laughs> I, uh, see you're still selling things unwrapped. That's a, a vicious rumour, madam. I've never even appeared in the shop unwrapped. <laughs> You. They do look tempting, little cakes. I might have risked a couple had you had some tongs. Don't you use tongs? Of course we use tongs, madam. Oh, I am notorious uh, on the tongs, but usually I just save them for the summer months, you see, because they are marvellous instruments for swatting flies. <laughs> look at that. Another per pregnant female. There we go. Which cake did you One of those did you want or one of those? No, no thank you. No, oh, I don't think so. Oh, a bit of cream's all over it. <laughs> Really, I uh, only came in looking for French cigarettes. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, I don't suppose you have any French cigarettes. No, but we have English ones you can smoke with a foreign accent. <laughs> I only smoke the French. Best thing that could happen to them. <laughs> oh, I remember a shop like this when I was a child. Yes, yes, so do I. This is it. <laughs> it's long since been condemned. Well, as a matter of actual fact, we are on the very verge of the same thing ourselves, you know. Really? Oh, yes, on account of the frats. The frats? Yes. Oh, they're everywhere, you know. They get under your skirting boards and your floorboards, into your cavity walls. My God, you've had it if they get into your cavity walls, you know. I'm surprised a property of this age has cavity walls. Well, we didn't have cavity walls till the damn bad frats got in, you see. <laughs> These frats. Frats? Oh, they are a nasty cross between a, a ferret and a rat. A ferret and a rat? Yes. And do they interbreed? Into, do they? That's all they ever do do, night and day. <laughs> oh, it only takes a jiffy, they tell me. Actually, it happened first by accident when two of the little creatures tried to force themselves through the same narrow aperture, you know, under. Uh, <laughs> like that, you see. Well, of course, once having got the knack. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, oh, yes. Yes, the knack of, uh, of producing frats, or as we say locally, uh, fraternisation. And um, you have them here? Oh, we've got them everywhere. They're spreading like wild frats. <laughs> but surely if there was an epidemic, I mean, the health authorities would no, be... No, 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 no. They, they don't risk a panic, you see. Oh, no. They just send someone along with a, a, board of a couple of holes in your walls and uh, tell, you, tell you you've got nothing. You see... <laughs> The trouble is, officially, the, the problem uh, doesn't exist. But what does one do? One acquires a frat detector. Something that burns economically on a low light, a little pleasant yellow flame which turns green the moment the frats appear. That's one. <laughs> Have you got any solid ground? for these suppositions about me mother. There's plenty of solid ground round here that your mother gave rise to suppositions on. <laughs> Mainly they're down by the canal. Well, that's pure guesswork. No, I don't think so. Not with the amount of her fresh fish she brought home of an evening. <laughs> Rubbish. Anyway, anyway, if I was half Hungarian, why wouldn't she call me Granville? Huh? Perhaps your the top half is called Granville. I mean, looking at that bottom half, it could be called any of the damn thing, that. Probably answers to some name like a Hugo. Well, there's a novelty. This is a great day for personal discoveries. My mother was the fisherman's friend and I got a bottom half called Hugo. Oh, don't Hugo, Hugo. I'll go. <laughs> well, uh, come in. Uh, don't be hesitant. Everything's for sale. Oh, no, I don't want anything. I was just passing and I've noticed you spelt your sign incorrectly. <laughs> Well, would you believe it? Forty years in grocery and provisions, and then suddenly this her head comes round the door, just a head, mind you, and starts correcting your spelling. Have you anything to su substantiate these charges? Oh, come and have a look. You've spelt special with a hoe. <laughs> with a hoe? <laughs> What's all about a damn fool with spelled special with a hoe? Oh. <laughs> you do feel a fool, don't you? <laughs> I noticed it as soon as I turned corner. Yes, yeah, you've got very sharp eyes, you have. Well, I suppose that's true. And I've always got my head in a boot. Yeah. I think that with a proper schooling, I could be even more important than I am now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Yes, I think if I'm not careful, you're going to turn out to be one of those eagle-eyed customers who, before I can say, it's, it's, it's Jack, uh, 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 before I can, before I can say, uh, uh, Jack, uh, Jack, uh, Jack, uh, Jack, uh, before I can say, uh, Ron Micklethwaite, <laughs> you are going to be uh, spotting all my little bargains, aren't you, and, and cleaning me out of profits for the week. What did you move then? When? Just then, you moved that tin. I moved that tin? It was over here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep anything from you, can I? <laughs> I thought, hello, what's he doing hiding that tin? <laughs> Baked beans. Yes. Spelt correctly, is it? <laughs> oh, it's spelt correctly. Why would anybody hide an everyday tin of baked beans? Ah, oh, well, now, let's get this straight. They're only that price temporarily for people who come in here with a regular weekly order. I can't go giving them away at that price to any... There's a strange spelling freak that comes in off the street. <laughs> What price should they be? Ah, now I've noticed that about people who've always got their heads in books. They seldom know the price of baked beans. <laughs> That's the wife's department, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I bet you don't know the prices of a whole range of simple commodities. <laughs> I know you don't spell special with a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> Right, here you go. Can you manage? That's the idea. <laughs> well done, and you certainly have been. <laughs> Cheerio, with two E's. I'll take two ounces. Right. You don't need so much now there's no man in the house. No, no, I suppose not. Not in quantity, no. Still, now you should be uh, spoiling yourself for a few little uh, luxury items. Not you know. after a lifetime scrimping and saving. Oh, well, uh, put it this way. After a lifetime of scrimping and saving, you should be able to afford a few little luxury items. Oh, I've got a bit tucked away. Yes. You can keep it tucked away, Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> I intend to. Yes, I can, I can tell that by your expression. And, of course, I had him insured. It brought me a lump sum. Oh, yes, it's very sad. Brings a lump sum to the throat, doesn't it? I suppose financially I've never been as well off. No, that's true, of course, that's very true. But mind you, how long will it last if you keep lashing out on two ounces of corned beef like this? I shall continue living simply. Oh, you've no idea how that sort of common sense warms the heart of a shopkeeper. Mm. <laughs> oh, dear. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's lovely when it all quietens down. There we are, Mrs. Burford. Uh, oh, dear. Well, don't tiptoe about there, Granville. Come in. Mm. What in a hangment have you got there? That is a bargain. <laughs> it's dripping oil, your bargain. Oh, eh? good, Granville. Fetch your cough dripping in front of a lady. Oh, 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 oh heck, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thing. What does he want? I don't know what he wants. Who can they tell at his age? Only last week I caught him sneaking off with an entire uh, ginger cake, you know. A ginger cake? Oh, yes, we've got a new batch in. It's irresistible. <laughs> All it needs is a new clutch. And uh, <laughs> a few more raisins. He's right. <laughs> now, listen, Granville, I hate to criticise, but in this subdued light, this looks like an old, old lawnmower. Yes, it is a lawnmower. <laughs> Aren't we overlooking something, uh, Mr. Thrower? We haven't got a flaming lawn. I uh, know we haven't got a lawn. <laughs> I've, I've raised a buyer. All these years I've been trying to bring him up as a seller, and now he turns out to be a, a, a buyer. I bought it for the engine. Oh. I'm going to fix it to the shop by. <laughs> Good morning, Bert. Oh, 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 look at all them of the poor buns, look. That's ingenious. A mower just inside the doorway makes you wonder why other shops haven't thought of that. Right, Should we make sure he's all right? Granville, the first thing to do in case of an accident is to consider the, the legal position, which is quite plain on first principles. 
What principles? Deny all responsibility. <laughs> well, he comes of a bouncing in here, a kicking an old lawnmower in off the street. Off the street? It was in here. Now, who in their right mind would her leave a lawnmower in here? It was in here. What, an old mower? I walked through that door and... Woof! I'm going before we get to needing witnesses round here. Granville, don't touch that bun. Never touched it. Never touched it. Once we touch that bun, we have accepted a delivery. And what we are going to do with a load of older damaged buns that have been all over this filthy floor, I don't know. They were not damaged buns when I came in here. I understand that, Bert. I realise your predicament. Let's have a ch chat about it outside, Predicament? Shall we? What predicament? Well, you're going to have a devil of a job trying to get an offer for them old buns now, aren't you? <laughs> Don't hang about, Granville. Start picking up our buns. I thought you said they weren't our buns. They will be in a minute, you barn pot. <laughs> Are you keeping Granville? <laughs> oh, hi, Wendy. You going my way? Am I going her way? its mouth is going to get a kick up the sprockets. Present getting ready for a little trip on the new reconditioned shop bike, aren't you, Granville? Who is? No, you're never going to get me on that shop bike ever again. Oh, all right then. I'll, I'll go go on myself. Mm. I might even uh, take in Atkinson Terrace. Remember Atkinson Terrace, do you? Where the late Mr. Featherstone used to get his uh, used to visit uh, twice a week. <laughs> I never knew the late Mr. Featherston used to visit Atkinson Terrace. Oh, yes, mind you, he was never the late Mr. Featherston there. <laughs> what number, Atkinson Terrace? Atkinson Terrace? Is that an echo? Oh. <laughs> Would that be the Atkinson Terrace I'm thinking about? Well, I must go. I've got three open wounds and something septic to see to. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like the Labour Party conference. <laughs> What about Atkinson Terrace? Uh, yes. Well, uh, my friends and I were wondering uh, just how far one could get on the new reconditioned uh, uh, shop a bicycle. Uh, Granville, fetch my hat, would you? Uh, my uh, sceptical friend there and my uh, sceptic friend here, <laughs> they decided that we couldn't uh, reach uh, Atkinson Terrace, but I've determined to, to prove them wrong. What, that old bike? Why don't you get him a new one? Oh, no, it's the hair overheads, you see. Oh, th thank you, Granville. Why do you want your hat, anyway? Oh, you can never be seen without a hat in, in Atkinson Terrace. <laughs> uh, trousers, possibly. 
But just a minute. Before anybody else goes, I'd like to know just what it was you were discussing about Atkinson Terrace. <clears throat> what number Atkinson Terrace would that be, Mrs Featherstone? Never you mind what number that might be. The Granville, you've got to come and see this or not? Aye, well, well, come in. <clears throat> I'm g going to start on low level ground. <laughs> I'll to show you who can reach Atkinson to Terrace. <laughs> See, no squeak. Your front wheel looks loose. Rub it. <laughs> some terrace. <laughs> Sir. Seriously, have you thought about a drawbridge? For me? Oh, that's really sweet, Granville. Well, uh, well, why don't you just take one milk bottle and I'll hold the flowers and then you... I'll say something. Can't you speak? Normally I can. I mean, <laughs> normally I can speak. What I mean is, if we were going out together on a date or something, I'd be able to speak. I'm almost certain I'd be able to speak. <laughs> Nobody's ever given me flowers on the street before. You're a nice person, Granville. Oh, I wish you'd never said that. Why? Because that's what girls say when they turn round and go off with somebody nasty. <laughs> somebody big, handsome and nasty. <clears throat> Funny you should say that. I knew it. I knew it. Never mind. I'll keep the flowers anyway. What's my boyfriend going to say? Well, don't tell him. Who's going to tell him? I'm not going to tell him. He's the milk round supervisor. He'll see me wandering round with these. Well, let's be honest about it. Tell him that Granville gave them to you. You know, Granville, who's not such a nice person, but maybe underneath is pretty nasty in an attractive sort of a way. <laughs> You know, keep the flowers. Tell him that's how Granville is, you know, flowers, champagne. Bolts. <laughs> <laughs> Stick to your bolts. No round supervisor.
big, isn't he? Did Mrs. Gillis be coming for her bread? Yes. Well, well what happened to the flowers? Her boyfriend gave them back to me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dear. Now, there we are, Mrs. Parslow. Will there be anything at all for my Mr. Parslow? I don't see why there should be. He never buys anything for me. Oh. Well, I thought you might surprise him with a bit of something tasty. I would. I knew where she lived. <laughs> <laughs> How's that uh, eldest bear boy of yours, then? Getting daft. Oh, dear. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mrs. Parslow. I call again. Uh, suppose I shall have to. Afternoon, Mrs. Parslow. Glad you think so. <laughs> <laughs> that woman. Yes, yeah, had a hard life. Built for it, wasn't she? Specially designed for it. Imagine how she'd cope with being happy. <laughs> Very below average in there, being happy, my love. Who was that? Don't worry, don't worry. It's a man whose dog often takes him for a walk. <laughs> what size dog is it? I don't know, he's never got that far in. <laughs> Do if he wants to buy something. You'll see. He'll be he'll be back in a minute. <laughs> there he comes. Come on a minute now. Stay, stay. Ooh, could I hit you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, watch this next bit. It's good. Could I hit you? At least we've got his money. <laughs> what does he want? A smaller flaming dog, if you ask me. <laughs> what does he want to buy? All that will become clear in the fullness of time, my love. Come on, come on, come on, now, stay, stay, sit, sit. Ooh. Could I have a bag of the condition powder, sir? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! What will he do with it when it gets healthy? <laughs> something with that till. I know, I'll have to. <laughs> One of these days I should be coming in here and finding you harmless. <laughs> which would do us all a favour. <laughs> it is on the list of little adjustments I have to make, my love. It is a second in order of priority. What's first? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Serves me right for asking. Uh, I know. Now watch, here we go, here we go. <laughs> next one, next one. Down, down, down! Sit! Oh! oh. Thank you very much. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> Cheerio! <laughs> Cheerio! <laughs> he's right at the top of the street now. Well, if he's in that good a condition, it must be him who's taking the powders. <laughs> Morning, Granville. <laughs> Are you still engaged? Yes, I'm still engaged. Oh, well, if, if it ever falls through, you'll know where to find me. In the Northern Eye Hospital. <laughs> Granville, you're a sweetheart. I don't want you crazy about me out of sympathy. Just cos I'm blind. <laughs> Going. Just, just a little query about the nurse's bread order. Oh, careful. Oh. Yes. Look, supposing somebody sees you. 
Good heavens, if you're too engaged for persons can't sort out their own bread order, what's the country coming to? Second thoughts, I think I'd be a bit, bit more welcome a bearing of your gifts. again. It's worth its weight in a grope, is this? A gold. <laughs> I present her with it, which per puts her in a good mood. I'd take advantage of that good mood, which puts her in a bad mood. She throws it at me, I catch it, and I'm ready for the next time. And no, no, not a penny spent. <laughs> you never know. Things might be different this morning. Are you in there, my little uh, sleeping beauty? Uh, Prince Charming. <laughs> Don't be lying in your lonely bed, my love. There's a couple of hundred weight of pure delight out here. <laughs> What am I doing? Well, well, what are you doing next to the door? I'm not next door. It's you, you fool. You're next door. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh I, was, I was just uh, climbing up here to, to rescue a little well, well, wounded budgie. Yeah, don't panic now, don't panic. I can feel his little her heart fluttering. <laughs> Oh, you, you look as if you might have got a nice warm place for a little, little home, Miss Kekrik. <laughs> you just take your little budgie home. <laughs> Come in, Mrs Blake. No, Granville, I'm not stopping. I just popped in to inquire if everything's all right. All right? Oh, well, you hear such stories. It's not true, is it? Is what true? Now, don't be offended. I'm only repeating what I've heard. No, no, go on. I shan't be offended. I want you to know that I never believed it personally, but there's a whisper going around that he gave Gordon Stackpole his money back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, aye, that's true. Oh, I am sorry to hear that. <laughs> Is there anything we can do? No, no, I don't think so. Thank you very much, Mrs. Blake. We just, you know, we just have to hope it's gonna pass. Chin up, Granville. <laughs> yes, it's true. He gave Gordon Stackpole his money back. <laughs> Elsie. Yeah. It's true. He gave Gordon Stackpole his money back. He's given Gordon Stackpole his money back. It's true. He gave Gordon Stackpole his money back. Oh. Granville, have you, have you got a pair of eyebrow tweezers there? I beg your pardon? <laughs> Do I look the type who has eyebrow tweezers about his person? Well, you don't get your penny in a knot. Especially when I'm cultivating this macho look. You no, know, I refrain from shaving some days in order to achieve this aggressive-looking stubble. <laughs> and then some clown comes up and says, uh, Can I borrow your eyebrow to do it? <laughs> well, listen, I don't mean your own, but the personal ones. We sell them here, don't we? They're on that uh, card over there. And get me a bottle of iodine and all, will you? Right. What you want them for? 
Oh, I just said I nailed on a box of tomatoes and I, I've got some splinters in my knees. Oh, I didn't think tomatoes had splinters. I thought they had pits. <laughs> Do you want to wear a box around the ears? Because I've got a special one in mind. It's out there for full of splinters. Oh! Well, personally, I fully expect to find these rumours of his strange behaviour much exaggerated, like his prices. It's Granville I feel sorry for. There's nothing wrong with Granville. Why do you feel sorry for him? I don't know, really. I think he's just got that sort of face. How can you not feel sorry for Granville? Every time I see him, I just want to cuddle him. You're not usually so positive about anything. It's just maternal. I think it's just maternal. <laughs> How can you tell? I don't think you can till it's too late. <laughs> I find life so complicated. It is, unless you keep it in its place. I thought I'd be used to it by now. Well, I'm not a religious woman, but I find if you say no to everything, you can hardly tell the difference. <laughs> life is something we're given as a test. I think I've failed. I used to look up to Mr Artwright. He could handle it. You can afford to at his prices. I thought he was unshakable. And then you hear all these stories about him giving money back. I don't believe it. I've got every confidence we shall walk into this shop and find him just the same as he's always been. Well, what's, what's wrong with her? Hey, we missed a couple of customers there, Granville. You should have had them. Well, me? They were only in here a couple of seconds. Well, yeah, you were nearest, weren't you? We can't afford to let customers as a slip through our knees like that. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, who would address in a costume like that and uh, propose like that? Aha! Oh, dear, he'll uh, never get the hang of that thing. What we need is uh, someone who's attractive, but uh, not, uh, not too expensive. Someone who's not too bright, but brave enough to be uh, casual about things like uh, frostbite. Mr. Albright, <laughs> could you come a minute, please? Julie. <laughs> Little uh, 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 jelly top Julie. <laughs> Miss Arkwright's store, 1982. Oh, ho, ho. hey, she, she might even do it for sweets. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can you get me out? What are you doing inside that, Granville? He's got me by the dangler. <laughs> How very inconvenient for you. Yes, I know. I was so busy trying to keep my fingers out of the way, I, I quite forgot about me dangler. <laughs> yes, yeah, you do, don't you? Is there anything I can do, Mr. Artwright? Well, it's, it's funny you should say that, Jelly. Uh, yeah, Julie. What are you doing? What are you doing? Um, just, uh, I'll be with you in a minute, Gr Granville. Uh, would you mind walking to the door and back, uh, Julie? To the door? Yes, and back. There's a good lass. Can you get me out? I'll be with you in a minute, uh, Granville. <laughs> What is it, Miss Rara? It's my slip showing. Oh, there's all in my tights. God, I bet there's all in my tights. No, 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 no. Calm down, dear Julie. Everything's her fine. Well, uh, yeah, almost of her fine. <laughs> uh, tell me, have you ever thought about my modelling? Have you ever thought of uh, getting me out? <laughs> Mr. Artwright. Yeah, my, my modelling, Julia. Oh, I don't think I'd be any good at it. Oh, it would be under my own uh, supervision and guide. Well, I were never any good at it before. Oh, you've done it before, have you? Oh! Uh, oh, well, I, 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 I think I should say, say straight away, Julie, that I could only offer you a fair, 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 fair fraction of, of the going rate, you see. I didn't realise you had murmur me and my, my, my model before. I'm still here. <laughs> it's been quite a while. Yeah, my feelings exactly. I think you were in standard four. I made this gnome out of plasticine. Ah, oh, no, I didn't mean that. Well, it was supposed to be a gnome. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it looked more like a frog. In fact, when the teacher came round, she said, what's that you've made, Julie? So I said, please, miss, it's a frog. I'm not usually so quick thinking. She picked it up, she said, oh, she said, it's a frog, is it? And she handed it back with a snooty expression. She said, oh, it looks more like a gnome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think you lost me around about the, the second frog, Julie. The, uh, no, what it is, I want you to model yourself, you see. I want you to be a mo Consider this while I go and unravel our gravel. A gravel. It's an about time, too. Yeah, now, 
How would you feel about being a little Miss Arkwright's of stores in a, in a 1982? No, thank you. <laughs> I've only got out my penny. I'm not putting a dress on now. <laughs> not you, you great clown. I'm talking to Julie. Oh. Little Miss Arkwright's stores? Yes. 1982? Yeah, it's a sort of central figure in our advertising campaign, you see. Me? Look, it's sorry, get me out of here! Be quiet, please. You're getting very noisy since you left your vest off. No, will you just... <laughs> just get me out? It's like having a loud speaker in the shop. Ah. Ah, that's it. <laughs> oh. That's it. A, a, that's a, what? A loud speaker in the shop, just like they have in a in, in, in supermarket. Where are you going with a, now? With, with a regular announcement to the, to the customers. <laughs> we'll have a speaker pointing that way, so it'll reach all the people in the street, you see. <laughs> Where's he going? Hey, come back. No, don't leave me here. Look, don't. Will you? Don't. Will you? <laughs> oh, no, leave me here. Granville. Oh, it's you, Julie. <laughs> hey, uh, don't hang about there. This is work to be done. <laughs> Right, the next minute his legs were all over the place. I know. His, his mother was very similar. <laughs> Are you going to start dressing properly again? Yes, I will. I'll start dressing properly again. Oh, oh come here. <laughs> Don't pull it. <laughs> oh. Hey, don't pull them. Oh. 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 Where's, where's me dangler? <laughs> oh, what kind of a question is that to ask a, a furry fairy? <laughs> oh. Shall I put, put another lump of coal on the fire, my love? I think it's going out. So will you be in a minute, so don't get too settled. Oh, I'll just finish this delicious cup of cocoa and then I'll be off. How dare you? That's coffee. Mm. I should have known, shouldn't I? It's so like you. Full-bodied, indefinable, uh, deep, with two, uh, two lumps. <laughs> All right, you old fool, don't start. Come on, drink up. Sam, you are off. It's been a tiring day. Yes, well, eventful, certainly. Little uh, uh, Julie's costume uh, caused quite a stir, didn't it? Have you ever thought of uh, taking up skating, my love? Me? Why? I've just opened a rink in my bedroom. <laughs> well, it's certainly cold enough up there. I think I might, might buy you one of them little skirts as a birthday present. Ah, oh, things are looking up. You don't usually buy me anything for my birthday. No, I'm, I'm talking about my birthday. <laughs> I, I'm going to be the one who's going to enjoy it. No, I think it'd be a nice little change for your bever bottom. Bever. You leave my bottom out of this. Bottom draw, I was going to say. I wish you'd let me finish. A skate registered nurse. I like that. <laughs> What's that? Julie. Oh, thump. I'll have to go. 